Hi, it's Simon. If you feel overwhelmed by the to-do lists and projects you're having to juggle every day, I believe that the best solution to finally feeling free from that stress is to get your life organized into a second brain system. This video is a step-by-step -step guide to how I process and organize tasks in Notion in my Life OS template. Whilst this is a great one-off video for ideas on how to manage your tasks in Notion, it's also the second video of my step-by-step -step onboarding guide series for the complete Notion Life OS templates. So if you're new to the channel, you might like to watch my full tour video of that Notion setup first and go to the full playlist for these guides that I've linked in the description. So in this video, we'll cover the concept of capturing tasks into an inbox, processing them into a system that returns them to you, how we use the weekly review system to ensure that we can keep on top of our projects, and finally, how you can combine this Notion Life OS task manager with your calendar and scheduling tools. And do note, we covered adding projects specifically in this system in the previous video in this Second Brain training series. Now, my system is guided by some key principles from day David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, that I think you should take to heart if you're using this setup and to understand what we're gonna cover here. Number one, any task with more than one action can be made into a project. Number two, we should follow the do, delegate, defer system to check tasks off or process tasks into our second brain system. And number three, staying on top of tasks in this way only works if you get the hang of A, capturing tasks as you think of them, B, processing your task inbox at the end of each day, and C, doing a weekly project review each week. Here's how it works. There are a huge amount of options in a task. So if we click new task, use this button, you might feel overwhelmed by all the options that are here. Don't worry about them. There are really only a few basic things you need to know, and then you can grow with these elements later on. The first thing is name it. Create tasks demo video. Due dates. Do you wanna do it on a specific date? I'm gonna say yes, and I'm gonna to say today. Deadline date. This is just a way to give yourself a hard deadline of when it's gotta be done. Maybe that might be tomorrow. You don't have to use it. And you can link it to a project, but I'm not gonna do it for now. Everything else, don't worry about it. Put it in, add a due date, and you're done. Now you'll see that it's listed in my inbox. Now what I'm gonna do now is put in a bunch of example tasks, either by clicking new here, and just going through and writing. And this would be the first thing to do. Just list everything down. Don't worry about due dates, deadlines, and who's doing them and what project they're for. Just get them all listed. What you'll see is the new task is a default. So this is a great place to put them in. Again, just click new task. And you can do it like this as well. Call grandma, write next iPad video plan. So let's say though you've dumped a huge amount of stuff into the inbox. This is not where you have to manage tasks. You can just tick it off and it will disappear. So that's great. But you might want to manage these things so that they drop down into your to-do list. Now, there's nothing in it at the moment, but this is where this week's tasks might sit. In order to process a task into the system, you can either leave it in the inbox and just get it done, and according to getting things done in David Allen, to zero a task inbox, you go, is it actionable? If it isn't, you can either drop it, put it into a list for later. If it is yes, then you need to know what the next action is. Do you delegate it to someone else, defer it by adding it to a project, or just get it done? So. Let's close that back up. These are my guides, you can always look at them. You might say, yeah, I'm gonna do that and it gets done. But let's say that I wanna order wood for the shed. I wanna do that on the weekend. So I'm gonna set a due date of this Saturday and the deadline can be next Saturday because I'm not in a rush. You might say a daily priority. I wanna do it in the morning or just order things. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to slide along to here and add it to a master project. Now adding something to a master project will filter it from the inbox. This is the fundamental technique you wanna use in my system. So I can build a shed, it links to that, and, and it will process it out of the system. And I'm gonna go through and do that. So here's what we do, create a task demo. The daily priority is the one thing I'm doing it today and the master project is the YouTube channel. Plan out the shed. I, wanna, I can plan that out pretty soon. I'm gonna do that Friday and deadline will be next sun next sunday 
and daily priority as and when, I'm not too worried about it, master project is going to be build a shed. Call grandma, let's call grandma on Friday and I'm just gonna add that to the project. Quick one-off tasks, write and plan the next iPad video. I'm gonna do that from here. I'm gonna add an end date. I'm gonna do it over a little period of time. I'm gonna do that in mornings and we're gonna do master project YouTube channel. Research mailing list providers. Let's say we do that on that day. Let's do that. Quick first actions. And actually, I realized that there isn't a project for it. I could just add one. So let's call this one. Click that. And if you want to edit that, I can just click through to it and edit it, but it's kind of working, so it's all good. That is how we process tasks from the inbox. Where have they gone? Well, you can see now they've gone into this week's tasks. And you'll see here that we have the next seven days of tasks. I can view all single tasks. They're all just listed down here. I can look at a weekly calendar view. If I clicked it today, I can now see my tasks within that weekly calendar view. Now, if I wanted to delegate something, I could just assign it, let's say to Sarah. And then if I look in delegated, I will see that that is assigned to someone else. So I don't need to worry about it. So there's my to-do list view. Fantastic. It's grouped by today in the next seven days and I can just work through and click when they're done and they'll disappear. As simple as that. Those are the basics. Now, if you wanna view by project, you could go to your highlighted projects, click to build a shed, and we will see that anything related to build a shed is in the to-do list view. And I can use this status to say if it's in progress or for example, if it's done. And within this view, you'll also see completed tasks. And if we go back to this week's tasks, maybe we wanna jump just straight to the view really quickly, we can see it's now disappeared from the system. Now, remember, it's as simple as that really, it is just one system, but I have created a lot of different views for this. If you don't wanna use them, don't use them. If we click to the today view, you'll be able to view tasks that are due today or overdue. So this will just show you stuff that is either past today's day or is today's day. So it's a nice way just to filter things down to see what you need. And that can be either viewed in the view or on the top of the page. Now, some people might prefer when they're actioning stuff for today is just to take this week's tasks and place it up here. If that's a better thing for you, if that's how you wanna work, just move things around, edit the views as you wish. This is just how I've organized it, but it gives you a sense of how this system can work. So focus on the task views, either by the weekly calendar view or the to-do list, and the inbox where you would just, when you have tasks, oh yeah, new task, you can just drop stuff in. Just remember I need to do that. It can stay in there. And then at the end of each day, I can go through and just allocate it to getting it done tomorrow. Daily priority, quick first tasks, master project, YouTube channel, and I've processed it. And then again, there it is. Today, tomorrow, next seven days. It's as simple as that. Let's say that the due date for this was yesterday, just to show you something. It'll disappear. It will show you yesterday's tasks, if you want to see those. But also, in the today view, it will still show it because it's overdue. I think this is really useful. So those are the basics. Try that first. Brain dump everything into your inbox set up your projects and link stuff through to it and you'll be good to go. One other thing you might wanna do is set up tasks that don't have due dates. That's very common. Now, how do you process those? Let me show you. I'm gonna put a new task in here and I'm gonna call this one, book a holiday for 2024. I don't wanna give it a due date. I just wanna allocate it to a project. I'm gonna put it into the yearly planning process. It's disappeared. It is of course not going to show up in live tasks down here. So where is it? Well, it's in the project. And that is why if we now jump to our projects dashboard, you probably want to be using the weekly review. The way this works is as follows. In the project view, set a last review date as whatever day you want to review a project on. Why don't we say it was every Monday? And then you can set the review frequency as days. 
So a review frequency is like, if I put 14 days, it tells me that the review date is due on the 31st of July. If I put seven days, it's seven days after that last review date. I think every week is really good, but maybe you just want to check things every two weeks or every month. I'm gonna set it for, for the week for this one so we can see it. In our weekly review view, view <laughs> you will see anything that is due for review. And there it is, due for review. So what you would do is you would click into it. I would look at what's in there. Oh yeah, I wanna do that. And maybe either do it, or perhaps I might actually click into it and set a due date. Actually, I do wanna do that tomorrow. And then once you reviewed the project and you're happy with it, maybe you add new tasks, adjust tasks or tick them off, you can click mark project as reviewed and it's gonna change this last review date to today. So if I click it here, it's now done. The next review is on the 1st of August and we will see if we drop back out of it, it's now disappeared from the weekly review inbox. That is the power of a weekly review. So as a, a little recap of that, for your projects, open up your projects, go through and set review dates. Last review date, I wanna do it every Friday and I want it to be every seven days for quick one-off tasks to review them. Great. Theatre shows, I want to set my last review date again as Friday and I wanna do it, it's automatically set for every seven days. Build a shed, I actually wanna review that every three days and I'll set review today because that's kind of happening right now. Great. And you'll see that if I set the Builder Shed last review to be out of date last Friday, it will turn up in the review. I can click in. Great. Very good. Check things off. That actually went wrong. The wood was wrong. I need to put it back to in progress. I'm happy. Market is reviewed and it's disappeared and will turn up again and you'll see the next review date is back to three days from now. That is how to use the weekly review. It's incredibly powerful because it means you don't have to have all of your tasks in your task planner. You can just be reminded to review your week. And of course, if you want that weekly review to be more easily found, don't forget that you can Within the homepage, there is a weekly review. You maybe you wanna move that entire thing up to remind yourself that you need to do that weekly review each week. So I'm gonna now break down a couple of the additional columns that you may be kind of going, what are they for? In this system, we have something called daily priority. Now, the reason this is very useful, if we now just move a couple of things to all of them to today so that we can look more closely at this. Today today. Okay, so we've got four tasks in here. This list is sorted by an order of things. Now, the one thing is the one thing you've got to do each day, quick actions you want to get done really quickly, and then where you want to place things. Now, the idea of this is that you can put things in an order. So I'm going to do that in the evening. I'm going to do that one in the afternoon. That is actually going to be morning because I want to start with doing that and it puts them in an order in the day. The advantage of this is if we look at the calendar view, it will put them in that order for you so you can then check them off and work down it. That's all daily priority is for, to organise your specific day. So each evening, I would suggest you look at your view, move things around and you go, oh, okay, I didn't manage to do that. That didn't quite happen. Let's just make that a morning job for the day after tomorrow. You would clean everything up and then you've got a nice clean view of your tasks for the day. You can also then check your today view if you wanna do it up here and it will sit there like that. So that's good. This progress view is purely to show you subtasks. I don't wanna go into subtasks just now, because I would ask yourself, do you really need subtasks in your system? They're great for kind of larger jobs, but I will show you more about that a little bit later on. So we'll go further with using a few other cool features like this daily priority example, things like dependent task report and a couple of other cool things around recurring tasks and all of that. But for now, I wanna do a final thing with you, which is how to integrate your calendar app in an effective way and a simple way with the Notion Life OS so you can quickly and easily join your task lists with your calendar. Let's take a look. You'll see here in this section, I have a My Calendar View section. And this is a demo of essentially 
an Indify widget. Now there are lots of ways you can manage a calendar. I personally think that it's much easier to manage your calendar in a proper calendar app at the moment, like Cron, which is great. And there is now a kind of a view integration with Notion or Google Calendar, which I still love. The easiest way to do this, I would suggest is this. Delete my example. This here is a link that should just work if you have Google Calendar, but otherwise you can just remove the link and let's say, new link you could type something in select it click link and paste a web address to your calendar in there so that you're able to jump to it and edit it whenever you want like that it will just jump up and show it to you and then in this section i would suggest you put an indify widget here's all of the instructions of how to do it but essentially what you're going to do is paste and embed an indify widget that you create into the system and it will show you a view of your Google Calendar. Let me just show you that really quickly. So if I go to Indify, here's a link. Here's my calendar widget. So you can create one, you sign up to a thing. I'm gonna click in, you sign in with your calendar, you set it how you want it to look and right down the bottom, you can copy the link. Let's close that up. I'm gonna close up my examples and you just paste it in here. Embed, just stretch it out to how you want it to look. And there you go, your calendar is in the view. And you can view your calendar by clicking through as well. I would suggest you probably wanna paste it in here as well. So this is the mobile view that you can click through to, which we talked about in previous examples. There you go. And if we go back, another view that you might wanna see this in is in your today view, my calendar. You might finally want to do the same and paste it in there. So then you're gonna have your calendar in all the views you want to use. And again, remember, if the today view isn't for you, just don't use it. Use the main homepage and use the calendar views. If you want your calendar to be really easily seen, forward slash turn, just turn it into a heading and your calendar will just be present on the page. So that just about does it for getting you onboarded with task and project management. Hopefully that'll get you moving along with LifeOS. And just remember, this is here to be edited, reduced, simplified, added to as you wish. I hope it works for you. Okay, coming next in this second brain training series, using more of my Notion task manager features, five amazing daily task tips to make daily tasks a doddle, as they say in the UK. Well, they don't say it that often. We'll also break down collecting and organizing notes and clippings in your Notion second brain. Oh, and next you might like to watch this guide on how I do daily habit tracking in my Notion Life OS system. And it would be awesome if you left a comment. Amazing if you booped the like button, if that's something you're into. And I'd better get back to creating. Bye.